The Retro Buzz starts right after this. Hey guys, it's Saturday and it's time for the Retro Buzz. I know we normally do it on a Friday, but, you know, Wilson over here decided to change all that and mess everything up. And you see why. He, 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 he tells us it's his, his son's birthday, but the reality of it is it's actually Glenn's birthday. Because look at this guy. He's, he looks like a kid. In a kid. Do you have three things there? Thanos stopped by earlier, and he dropped these off for me to watch for him. He's getting his glove fixed, so nice. he dropped these off for me to, you know, to, to look at for a little while, and I don't mind. Is that all three of them? You have the PC Engine, the Core Graphics, and the Turbo Graphics 16 Minis. You gotta have, yeah, you gotta have three now. I haven't got my other four sets yet. This is my first set. Jeez, no wonder uh, they shut down. Your first Holy Trinity. That's right, the first one. Thanos will snap his finger. I'll get the rest. <laughs> Oh, we'll come back to Glenn here in a little bit. But we also have got Mr. Douglas Smith, uh, Mr. Howdy, howdy. Cool Toy. It's great to have you guys Pleasure here. We, we have a special guest with us, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. But we, um, we've got some news to talk about really quick. Um, I want to kind of present this to everybody. So if you didn't know, Mother's Day is coming up. And the folks... You better at, know. Well, yeah, you better <laughs> know this, know. right? So the folks at At Game sent me an email, and they said, we want you to show this on your show and we we want you guys to to talk about this and it said happy mother's day and i know apple does a lot of things like that apple will drop bombs like that and they'll put pictures out there and we got to kind of figure out what is going on decode it yeah we have to decode it so uh what do you guys think i mean they said that we have to watch their social channels this week to find out what that means but what do you what do you guys think Let's let's take a slab. Go for it, Doug. So it sounds like it's going to be like a an Easter egg hunt type of thing where they're going to, you know, or not Easter egg hunt, but like a Hansel and Gretel type situation where some bread comes are going to be periodically scattered throughout their social media channels, and we got to kind of put the pieces together and find find the the light at the end of the tunnel or something like that. And obviously, um, with Mother's Day being the main theme of that image, it probably has something to do with gaming and mothers. So uh, hopefully. Hopefully we can stay tuned to the social media channels, maybe win some stuff, figure some stuff out, and play some games with mom, maybe. Glenn, I think it had something to do with Kathleen. I think that <laughs> you and her were supposed to do some is, – is that well, what you're picking up? No? Well, the thing is, Doug couldn't be farther off base. <laughs> so <laughs> what they're doing is it's the Kathleen Kennedy game coming from that games – where she promises you the world and instead gives you garbage. Oh, my. And then she wants you to take out the garbage. So every 15 minutes of gameplay, <sighs> Captain Kenny pops on the screen saying, take out the garbage or do the dishes <laughs> or whatever. Or go watch the worst Star Wars trilogy ever made type of thing. So that's really what it's going to be about. That's, you know, I'm telling you. Doug, I'm going to stick with you on this one. I think that there's some kind of, uh, yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with Kathy and Kelly. Kelly. Kennedy, Kelly, whatever you call her, week in and week out, it, it you just devil woman. I think is what he. Took yeah, he's called her. Ass. He's called her that a few times. Yeah, just about. But just about. Doug, I destroyed, destroyed an empire. I kind mm -hmm. of broke down, and um, I know you're still waiting, and I but I broke down, and I got the, the Turbo Graphics. Made, I ordered it right before the cutoff for oh. Japan. I yes. bought it. But hear hear me out, so everybody sees that I have this. The only thing I've done with it so far, and I've had it for about a week and a half, is I've taken it out of the box, did the unboxing video, packaged it back up, and put it back in the box. And the reason for that is having that EverDrive, I was kind of like, ah, oh, it's missing some cool games. So I, yeah, yeah. so I'm going to do a Glenny with that. I'm going to put it up on the plastic bag. It. I got I'm going to plastic bag. I'm going to send you the bag. 
I'll send you the bag so you can put it in there. Well, no, you gotta have the bag to keep it all safe. I can actually use the one from this. So, so yesterday they had a really good deal. Glenn shared with us. He said that they had the Neo Geo Minis yeah, for thirty $30. bucks. So I did pick one of these up. If you guys, I know a lot of you guys got your orders in, but I also, Doug, I don't know if you got, I know you had one earlier, but I picked up the controllers, 22 mm -hmm. bucks a piece. Yep. So I've got those, and that'll be tomorrow's project to to play around with that. I got nothing. Mine's still <laughs> in shipping. I got nothing. I post it, and I got nothing. Hey, you're the one that lives in the ca the, 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 the pandemic capital of the world. It's not our fault. Yeah, very true. The very true. center of this right now. What it really boils down to, it sounds like I'm the only person left standing in the world that doesn't have the TurboGrafx Mini. And what it's really <laughs> going to come down to is I'm going to have to pay scalper prices. And by scalper prices, I mean Glenn's retro show prices and maybe get him to sell <laughs> me one of the four that he owns for me to be able to get Dude, this. Dude, I told you I want a Tesla. I got to get a Tesla, man. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, Glenn, gotta Glenn's got four other ones on order, so he'll just sell you one. It's it's yeah. that it's that's, it's that's, that's what it's gonna boil down to because mine you know I'll be retired by the time mine actually ships from Amazon in USA. <laughs> well, without further ado, we have another special guest here that we can kind of talk some more about this stuff with. Um, we titled this one "Rigging the System" because we've got Mr. John Riggs with us. YouTube Riggs in the house. What's going on? No, I'm good, man. How are you feeling? Doing all right. We're doing all right. Glenn's not doing good. too well though. Oh, that's what. What happened? Well, because he doesn't have all have, five I, I, of his turbos yet. Yeah, I don't have that. I don't have my new Geo Mini yet. I mean, <laughs> sure. come on. Yeah, these things happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so what did did you uh, did you jump on this even to buy another one at thirty bucks? I think you had this already. Did you did you jump yeah. on it or did you just kind of stay like the normal uh, rest of us? I'm I'm good for now. I mean, I had one. Did my video uh, when the system first came out. Um, and again, just like everything else, I got it, did the video, played it for a little bit, and then I shelved it, and that's where I sat this entire time. And even when I saw that deal, too, it's like 30 bucks, I could go for another one. But it's like, what am I going to do with two of them outside of, you know, keep one pristine, and then and the other what one I never even What can't you do? <laughs> what can't you do with more than uh, one? Glenn will show you. Oh, plenty. <laughs> Get the bags out, Glenn. Get the bags out. No, I mean, even the one that I had... Um, even the one I had, I gifted to another content creator so he could do a video on one because I got one a little bit earlier than like the public, I guess. Um, so it's like, but it's still, you know, I don't need it right now. It's a great deal and it works, um, I think, pretty well. I'm, when you plug it in through HDMI to a monitor, it's not as good as it could be, but just like as a standalone by itself, I think they're pretty neat. So, um, I'm, so I'm, that's I'm, what I want to do. I want to put it with my consoles. So you're saying that the, the screen is not going to be something I'm going to be too happy with. It works. It's not the best. It's yeah. not the best, but it's, I mean, it's all right. <laughs> I just, I just like it for what it is. It's like a standalone thing. I also wish it had batteries or some kind of rechargeable something. Cause it's like, it's, it looks portable, but you still have to plug it in. So yeah. I don't know. See, that's what I like about John. And he had the keyword right there. He likes it like? for what it is. A lot of people take things. Well, it's not as good as the arcade machine. It's not a $5,000 Neo Geo arcade machine. <laughs> it's not supposed to be. It's not exactly. supposed to be. He takes it, he could take it for what it is and enjoy it at that point. He can still have issues with it, but at least he says, okay, hold on a second. This is a small mini unit, it's an emulation unit. Let's enjoy it for that, and then I can take a look at it from there. So that's what I really like about John, is he, he can do things like that. So you're not yeah, going to we'll be a purist? A... No, I mean, you can't be, especially when it comes to emulation, especially when it comes to like, these portables, these handhelds, um, you know, the Evercade's coming out soon. I was checking that out. Yes, um, I watched that video. That I want one. I mean, you can't, you almost can't be a purist. Fortunately, I'm not as um, sensitive <laughs> to lag. Good Lord. I got, yeah. Hey, that's okay. He's photobombing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. But if somebody with like the Neo Geo Mini, maybe down the line, you know, I'm waiting forward to uh, like Cool Toy doing some kind of modding thing where he actually shoves an entire Neo Geo in the back of it somehow and, you know, <laughs> soups up the So it's like, it's portable, but it has like a 20 inch like monitor or something. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I want a real Neo Geo. I really do. Never had one as yeah, a kid. Yeah, I never had one. Me neither. Mm -hmm. And and that, that's kind of how it was with the Turbo Graphics. Well, they're just too much money. They're too much they're, money. That's I have, it. I know John, John has one as well. I got the, the uh, Neo Geo X Gold. I got that. Right. And I've never even taken it out of the box yet. It's still sitting in the box. So I, I don't even know how well, it, if it works. But to own a real Neo Geo, even now, it's just it's expensive. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing. It, 
it works. I mean, it it works like the what like what your Neo Geo Mini does. Um, the Neo Geo X Gold. It's you know purists are like ah, it's just it, it's not what they wanted it to be. But I, I thought it played just fine for the games I wanted to play it on. So, what do you think, Doug? Uh, you've had it for a while. Mm -hmm. Is it is it is it all that's hyped up to be? Should people be thrilled that they got it for thirty bucks? Somebody like me I who mean... didn't have it before. Yeah, thirty dollars is a steal in my opinion. Uh, I got mine during the Black Friday deal. I got it for sixty dollars, and it came with two controllers, which was a heck of a deal because the controllers are what I was after. Because in reality, you're not really going to enjoy playing it like this with adult-sized hands. Um, <laughs> the HDMI out port, you know, it works and everything, but it's just not as good as it should or could be. Um, I bought it for collectability. They actually have a like a a stand you can buy from Japan. It places under it and it looks like the old school Japanese version of the Neo Geo arcades. So I've got mine on one of those and I've got it next to my like New Wave Toys collectible replicate arcades. It kind of fits in with that scale. So that's what I've utilized mine for right now. What about, um, you know, with going with this adding, like, because I bought the controllers, I got the black one. Somebody said in the chat room, Nacho said, you know, nineteen ninety nine. For the white controllers, people might look at that and go, "Man, thirty bucks for the 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 get system, and then maybe like fifty bucks yeah. for two controllers." Is it is it worth it? Because I, Doug, I think you pointed out in our our little conversation that we had, mm -hmm. the joystick and buttons on it, it sucks. I mean, it just yeah. flat out. Right. Yeah, I mean, they're they're not a, a click clicky joystick or button or anything. They just mush and they have no response to them. So it's just like. And again, back to the adult size hands, you know, you're obviously <laughs> not meant to really get your hands in there and be able to play a game enjoyably. I mean, you could play something like Metal Slug where it doesn't need, you know, super precise movements. But if you're going to play one of the fighting games, you're obviously not going to want to do it, you know, Zoolander style like this. <laughs> well, I mean, you could. You could. You yeah, could. It's not ideal. So the controllers are what I was excited about. You know, they got that nice little D-pad. Um you know, they're, they got the white and black version, so you can go whatever you want. But I, I like plugging these in. Um, and then the ability, what they got that, was it the Neo Geo Arcade Stick that is kind of like a, a companion piece? Yeah. Uh, you could right. plug it in and use that, or you can just play those games, and it's got HDMI out as well. So I like what they're doing. It's just um, I, I, I didn't think the MSRP initially was uh, where they needed to be. I think where these you right. know 60 right. to $30 sell point is where they need to be. So hopefully they're still making money. I, I'd like to see them, you know, pro proceed to release future things like this and expand upon it. But uh, the $129 that they were asking for for the arcade stick and like, I think the Neo Geo Mini was originally $100 as well without any controllers. I thought that was a bit steep as well. Yeah. You always give it to the, uh, you know, the early adopters. They always get the screws. <laughs> if you yeah. wait and got patience, you know, that's when you, you went out. Like the PlayStation. Yeah. I mean, look at the PlayStation Mini. Yeah. Like the PlayStation yeah. Mini. I bought that for like ninety nine dollars, and yeah, you know, I did the same thing. suck a hook right in there. It got me, and it was garbage as it was. Of course, look wise, it's great. Just emulation wise, it sucks until you you know you you hack it. Um, mm -hmm. The only one that was probably worth its price if you got it, if you were able to get it, was the NES Classic Mini. But of course, no one got it at that price. You pretty much had to get the scalper price mm -hmm. on those. Um, I got mine for twenty you know, be... twenty two dollars. My PlayStation Mini, oh, shut up. new from Best Buy, shut it was up. a fire sale. <laughs> I almost bought Literally two or three of them, stuff. but they would only let yeah. us get one per person. But yeah, that's a good price. Twenty three bucks. I saw some woman at Best Buy give her two kids. Here, here's a oh, I'm sure kids. you. She walked out with her Mini. The you would have done that. They're slaves. Oh uh, yeah, would have. Yeah. <laughs> so John, let's talk about your new acquisition. I know you, we we've we've all been on the train here with the At Games Legends Ultimate. And oh, now, sure. and now you you're on board with it. You got it. What made you decide to get this cabinet? Because there's some mixed emotions out there. People are like, arcade one up is king. People are like, why would you want to go with a company that's been had a bad reputation all these years? And you know, I mean, everybody that has one of these arcades, for the most part, they love this thing. This thing is like sure. a gold mine. So talk yeah. talk to us a little bit. What what made you decide to pull the the trigger on it? Well, for me, it was I'm um, playing it. Uh, they, they had a demo model at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo last year, and I didn't even know it was going to be there. It was just in, in the um, at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, there's a Tetris tournament, which I'm usually not part of, but I think it's cool to see everyone there and all competing and everything. So I, did, I popped my head in just to kind of look around a little bit, and here it is. Here's this At Games Legends Ultimate that I've heard about. Um, you know, I get At Games, you know, I follow them on Twitter, and I see their updates and everything, and 
I was curious about it. I was interested. Um, I know their history as well, but I also still think, I mean, there's even, even before all that, they had some other products that I thought were really good. Um, a lot of people trash their Genesis flashback systems, but their latest version of the Genesis flashback that also had Master System and Game Gear games on it uh, and could play actual cards. I thought it worked pretty well. Um, I was actually a fan of that one, and I, I still use it if I can. Um, so when I saw when I heard the arcade coming out, I was like, uh, you know, the price is a little high. Yes, there is, uh, you know, arcade one ups. I have one arcade one up, um, and I like them, but I'm also six foot five. So to play one, I'm either sitting down in a very awkward, like man spreading thing to wrap my legs around the console. Um, or, you know, or I have to put it up on, you know, on a different kind of riser, maybe put it up on a chair or something, which is totally, you know, counter, you know, um, so, but, but they work out pretty well. They, they, they really are. Um, but when I heard about the app game, you know, the Legends Ultimate, when I actually played it hands-on, I was like, oh, this is pretty neat. I like it for what it is. I didn't have any clue about what you can do to it later, um, about the adding your own ROMs and the, you know, the bring your own game and playing games through Steam on it, uh, you know, with the arcade link and all that. Um, I was I was really interested in that, and when I uh, once I started watching a few videos on here's what you can do and here's how you can add games and everything, um, I was like that's that's an instant winner. I have a Pandora's box. I mean I have a Pandora's box that's the dual arcade stick, HDMI, plug it in, comes equipped with like two thousand games, um, and it works really well. But this is you know the standalone and the fact that it has the trackball and the spin dial thing. Um, I thought it'd be fun not just for me and my nostalgia, but also you know having children. Um, you know, they can play like the bowling games where you just use the trackball or, um, you know, the other day, my, you know, my daughter and I were literally playing Pong, you know, so um, there's a lot, of, you know, has, has a lot of, you just made Glenn's Pong. day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fans of the old school too. And Pong was my first console growing up. So I'm, I've always had a, always had a fondness for Pong. So, um, I mean, it just, it did, it took playing it. It just like being a, v, I'm, I'm a huge VR gamer too. It takes actually experiencing it for you to say, okay, this is actually pretty cool, you know, or to, or to have the opposite opinion saying, well, I'm, at least I'm glad I tried it before I bought it. Um, but yeah, everybody who, uh, who I've shown the at games one up, um, it, it never, or not the at games one up, the at games, uh, the legends, uh, ultimate, you know, it, it, it's the fact that it's from at games. It's, you know, Nintendo is not, you know, Nintendo has the word Nintendo on it, but everything they've made isn't gold, you know? So it's just, you, you take the good with the bad and, you, you discover your own stuff, and you just don't read into the internet hype. Well, and and right. I, I think we all agree. And Glenn, I mean, there's been so many things. Even like growing up, we talked about the Turbo Graphics 16. Every kid that I was right. around, nobody had one because everybody said Nintendo's best, right. or Sega's best. That was the war. Right. And now, what right. does everybody right. that's, want? That's that's exactly it. There's so there's so much word of mouth, especially back before the internet, where people would say, "No, you want you want the NES or Genesis." No one wants this other one. So no one experienced it. And then eventually no one experienced it. And it was just word of mouth. Oh, it sucks. No good. Then you come 20, 30 years later and you have a mini come out. People are playing it for the first time going, holy holy cow, this thing's actually really fun. And not only that, I personally, a lot of people I talk to find that these minis are actually the best ones out so far. Just because of the whole experience. Like the good game library, the interface, the way it's put together. It's just it's just a really nice mini, and a lot of people never got to experience it because of word of mouth. That it just it just sucks, and no one wants it, and it's a shame. But at games, as you see right now, as, as John just said, that they, they, were, they had a stigma, and for for whether they deserved it or not is up to the individual person. I I just, people know I got all of them anyway. Um, I take it for what it is. That's what John does, and and as you as you take them for what they are, they're enjoyable, but they're not supposed to be you know, exact replicas of the arcade machine or stuff like that. You know, they're a $30 impulse buy. You go to the store, oh, my God, I remember those games. You buy it, and you, and you play it for a little while. That's what they were for. It was almost, right. almost like a stocking stuffer type of thing. So, you know, but at games did release some that were, you know, not good. Like the, you know, the uh, the ColecoVision uh, flashback they did, was it was okay, but the controls were all wrong, wrong colors. They just weren't done right. So there, there's some missteps. So when the Legends Ultimate came out, just too many people had that, uh, at games, oh man, it's gonna be garbage, and right. it took them a little while, it, but not as long as I thought. I mean, we talked about this way back in episodes one and two, that you know, we didn't think at games would turn around as quick as they did, but people went from hating at games to now people defending them, almost like you know yeah. the 300 Sparta, and they're defending <laughs> you know the Legends Ultimate because it they they took the time, they sat back and said, listen, we need to change our game, we need to change our image. And we need to prove that we can come out with something good. And they have. And not only that, after the fact of selling it for what it was, this been, as John said, 
enhancements, ways to add more games, more things you could do to it. Glenn Retro Short Tron joysticks, you know, all kinds of things <laughs> you could you could put on there. Um, it's just the fact that they came out with something that's kind of open ended for good or bad. Um, we come into also the part with piracy is, is kind of a big thing now with, with some of these machines. And, you know, that that could hurt the retro community at one side of the coin. But on the other side of the coin, pirating and people using stuff illegally has always been here. I mean, it's, it's a thing that's it's a dark little secret. But, you know, people like John, you guys, myself, obviously, you know, if you come out with something and it's decent, we're going to buy it. In my yeah. case, even if it's not decent, I buy it, but whatever. <laughs> um, the, but, the, but the point is, these companies are realizing that our community, the retro gaming community, is just as viable as an Xbox One or a PlayStation 5 community. Money is to be made, but you got to make something decent. If you do, they will come. John John Diamonin in the chat room, he's standing up for Doug here with the whole Sega. He's like, no, the Turbo, <laughs> Turbo Graphics didn't do well because Sega and What's Nintendo that? were just better with a larger library. Uh, yeah. It's not coming. What? <laughs> what? Hello? Uh, I can't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> don't transmit reason. That's why you can't hear it. But I have to agree with John on that. I think, you know, John Riggs, I don't know if you agree with that too, but there's certain games on the TurboGrafx-16 that's like, where, where, where did that come from? Like, you have these great oh, sure. killer games, and then it's like... The filler? Yeah, like <laughs> really bad yeah. fillers. Like, okay, what's the one that has the Beach Boys song that's playing in the background? Uh, oh, um, uh, that'd be uh, Yo Bro. Or oh uh, yeah, yeah, yo, yo Bro. It's like a bear that's riding a skateboard, and I was playing right. it, and my daughter and goes. For the, the, the Turbo Graphic Sixteen, they have a Camp California. Yeah, which what, is a kind of pseudo sequel. What What is that? <laughs> like, I still don't understand the point of Yo Bro. I played it. It was, it was catchy because I, yeah. I know the Beach Boys. It's the nineties, dude. Yo Bro was it? That was where it was at. The nineties. No. Yeah, you said bro, you said bear on a skateboard. That, that's the most nineties thing I've ever heard. It's no bro, no bro. <laughs> Get no, no I mean, bro. Every system had those. Every system had the, you know, the gold, and then there was the filler stuff. And um, I mean, I had a TurboGrafx sixteen um, back in you know when it, when it was. Uh, I think I got one about six months after it came out because there was a couple of games on there I, I really wanted to, to check out, and then I already had a Nintendo from way back in the day, and I already had a Sega Genesis. Um, and because I always have to get all the consoles because there's always going to be those exclusives that no one else is talking about, yep. um, you know, during the, the, the console wars with Nintendo and Sega, it's like, I like both of those. And, you know, I was the one kid in my block who had the TurboGrafx-16 too. Um, so, but yeah, but just by playing through those and you find, you know, you're going to have your blazing lasers and your bonk and your, you know, and whatever else, but yeah, you're going to have the Ogro. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to have impossible, you know, you're going to have all these impossible. other ones. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, come on. Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. That was the seller right there. <laughs> hey, Keith that was a, no, that was packing. That was, yeah, was good. Yeah, that it was, was packing. That's right. That's why it's it should have been there's so many That's other games that sell. should have been the packing. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they maybe, yeah. It was the packing because no one would buy it, you know. It was based on yeah, an anime was, that never was, came out in America. Yeah, it go. was just it was a game that when you bought this machine, you're like, you're not buying this machine to play that game. You were buying it to get some other game. But Keith Courage yeah. and Alpha Zones, it was just like the wrongest wrong of a packing yeah. game. Well, I mean, was... Maybe that's a smart idea. I mean, back then, you, you know, Nintendo released uh, the Game Boy with Tetris because they knew that people right. wanted to play Tetris. So here's your Game Boy with Tetris. If it happened today, there's no way they would make Tetris for free because you know they're going to buy it. So right. keep those in Alpha Zone. They, they can get away with, you know, because people are going to like, oh, Legendary Axe. This game looks awesome. I want to buy that. But if it's already free, then they're, that's money out of their pocket, you know? So maybe well, we'll throw in. Well, you know, the, the look at Sega. Sega, you know, they didn't want to pack in Sonic, you know, but Sega USA says, no, we want to put Sonic in there. That, that's our biggest game. Why are we going to pack it in with the Genesis? Why? Sold machines. Just yeah, that simple. That's when I bought mine. Yeah. I yeah. bought mine when I, I bought my Genesis uh, right when they had Sonic as the pack in. And then I had to go out and find a used copy of uh, Altered Beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so I, I, I got like five Altered Beast. Oh, of course you do. Of course you do. Altered do. Beast. <laughs> One for every level. Let's, let's shift gears here a little bit because... There was another retro game that just came out that was remade, completely oh, redone. Oh. And I don't know about all you guys, but I, I also, not only did I, I pre-order it, as, as Doug did, I believe, um, I wanted the original Genesis case for it along oh, with sure. it. Um, so I did that, but like Doug said, we won't see that for months. But I also got it from the Play, the Play Store, and that is Streets of Rage 
four. And Doug, I hope you don't mind. I'm hijacking your footage here from, oh, from earlier. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of this? Uh, I mean, I played it last night. I was, I got, I got to like mission two or three cause that's all the time I had. Um, what's, what's your overall thoughts on this? Well, Doug, since it's your video, we'll start with you so you can kind of, okay. So it looks like <laughs> yeah. you're talking down there. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had a blast with it. Like, uh, I literally, I was like, okay, I'm going to stream and play a little bit of it. Uh, I kind of thought I'd play for an hour and, uh, just enjoy it that way. And. I ended up beating the entire game in one sitting. I hate um, you. I mean, it took me two hours to do it, but like, it was still super fun and enjoyable. Like, I didn't feel bored with anything. Uh, I felt like it was like a really good uh, like love letter to the previous Streets of Rage fans, especially Streets of Rage Two fans specifically. Like, the very first level of Streets of Rage Four feels like it's like one block away from the opening level of Streets of Rage Two. Like, it just feels so cohesive in that nature. It's got you know. New updated graphics. Originally, when the trailer first came out, people were like, oh, this looks like a cell phone game. And I kind of thought that as well until I saw some actual like updated gameplay footage. And then you can really look at the level design, the details. Like, there's so many little nuances going on. Like, there's flies buzzing around trash and garbage. There's pigeons that fly around. There's like little dust particles that give the, the stages an extra level of depth. So I was really impressed with it. Um, the soundtrack it had the original composers from Streets Rage 2 coming back to do the music. Uh, it obviously is not as catchy as Streets of Rage 2, but maybe that's just subjective and comes with time. You know, I've got to play this more before all these songs, you know, get burned in my head like the original Streets of Rage 2 songs were. So, so far, I've been loving it to death. All right. Because oh, we'll, we'll do Glenn last because Glenn absolutely hates fighting games and can't win at them. So, <laughs> John, <laughs> yes. what's, your, what's your thoughts of it? Uh, the same. Um, I I played through it. Uh, same, same as you. I, I played through it on my first sitting um, on easy mode. I'll I'll go through back and play it through the other modes too. But I like the I like the music. Um, I actually went out after I beat it and um, bought the digital soundtrack through uh, Bandcamp or SoundCloud or one of those. Whoever did the music for it, I was like, oh, here's the. Um, I I reached out to Dot EMU and I was like, hey, do you have this like the CD for sale? And like, well, we don't have the CD. Uh, they're doing a vinyl with limited run games. Um, but if you want the CD, I mean, here's, you know, you can listen to the songs online for free. And there's also like a click to, you know, buy the whole album for 10 bucks. So I was like, did that, supported the cause. Um, I, I like the fact that between each stage, so like sometimes you play the game, like let's say as Axel, that was the first guy I played as. And you feel like you're stuck with them until you die. But they say, but you can change characters after each stage if you want, which I thought was kind of cool. I didn't realize that until about three stages in. It was just a, see who else is out there and see what else is out there. You can unlock new characters too. So I have uh, one of them unlocked so far. Uh, so I'll have to go back through and uh, get the rest of them. But yeah, it's the same where um, I heard about it. Cool. You know, I love the Streets of Rage games back in the day, uh, especially Streets of Rage 2. Um, I saw gameplay footage at, was it E3? It may have been PAX West, but I didn't play it. I saw it and I was like, oh, there it is again. Okay. And I just, at that point, I was like, I'll play it when it comes out because that's kind of how I am with almost every game. I see games at E3. I see games at PAX West. I just, I don't, I don't want to late. I'm not waiting in line for two hours to play some game. I'll play in a couple of months. I just kind of right. look over. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out when it comes out, you know, um, no big deal. And, um, and it's out and I'm glad I did. And I played a little bit online too. Um, I played two stages online. The first one, I think I was running off of their, like their Wi-Fi or something, which was, I mean, it had to have been like a 96 baud rate. I don't know. It was like super slow and stuttery and it <laughs> didn't quite move as fast. <laughs> Um, but then when I backed out of that stage and went to another online, it's just a random, like, here's, who, here's who's all playing online that you can join their party. You can just jump right in. And, um, and when I did that on the next one, um, it, it, it played as if there's, I was sitting right next to some guy playing, you know, playing through Rage dude right, uh, right next to him. So a couple new moves in there too. I love the fact that you can like throw your items and then bounce it back and you can catch it again and like throw it again or hit someone else with it. And, um, yeah, there's a lot going on with this game, like the air combos and all that. Um, I'm a huge fan, like I said. Um, beat it my first sitting, and I'm I'll play it probably uh, right after this podcast and you, you, <laughs> go you, through it. You, as someone you can't else. beat the price on it, and and Doug, if you can look up that uh, super chat there while we get Glenn's view of this, because uh, Glenn's probably going through and playing as you. People don't know that you're the special character in here, Doug. You're you're actual. Yeah, you, right? you reprise yeah. the role of Axel. I came back with Axel. I you came back. That. That's why he's got the beard going on. He's yeah. he's you know he <laughs> he reprised the role as Axel. <laughs> um, no, we got a super chat from Zohar. It says, "I remember seeing ads for Neo Geo and GamePro mags, and thought Turbo Graphics is not that Turbo in comparison. So Neo Geo and Genesis destroyed Turbo." Ooh, oh, interesting. Neo yeah. Geo, what? yeah. So those are fighting Hello. words. 
<laughs> look at oh, look okay. what look what wait 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 look what Glenn had to do. Glenn had to go get reinforcement because <laughs> he's getting his butt handed to him about the turbo graphics. You notice yeah, this? Yeah. So what's if you're that? Axel, that's what? paid, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Well played. Glenn, did you get well, did, that, did you get it? Streets of Rage? Streets of Rage? No, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shock you guys in a couple of things, and Cole can even testify to talk about Streets of Rage. What is my favorite Sega Genesis game? I just gave you the answer. Streets of Rage, right. <laughs> so not, not only not only did I play one, two, and three, I beat Streets of Rage, all three of them. So Streets of Rage 2 is my absolute all-time favorite Sega Genesis game by, by far. Um, it's just a fantastic game. The soundtrack is phenomenal. And to be honest, that's one of the things that hurt at games with their with their consoles. With If you play Streets of Rage on the flashbacks, usually the audio is like, horrible and you, you can't ruin that soundtrack the soundtrack is legendary right. so yeah. with that being said i haven't played streets of Fate, uh, rage 4 yet um but the uh, we're talking about the minis i will definitely give kudos 100 percent to streets rage and sega on that one it is just a phenomenal game it's probably one of my favorite games of all times next to punk and, and the price you can't beat the price right like they could have yeah. came out and just said you're gonna drop 60 bones on this thing and what was it? Twenty-two bucks, I think it was, or yeah, was yeah. something like that. And there's a lot of you know replayability and things to go back for and unlock and like, you know, go figure. You actually got to like play through the game to unlock things, as opposed to the whole pay to win and like loot crate <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. I'll like, that. They, yeah. yeah, they did it the way it's supposed to do. Well, I'm thinking about. I, I have it for the PS4, but I'm actually thinking about buying it on Steam as well, so I can play it on my Legends because P Dub said, it you play it in arcade mode on the Legends and it. It's it's how it would be if it was in the arcade. So that kind of got me excited, and I might I might buy it on Steam as well for, you know, whatever they have it for twenty bucks or whatnot. Right, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. So it might be worth. Uh, did any of you guys get it on Steam, or you do all PlayStation? What, what did you do it on? I got mine on Steam because you know that I did the physical limited run order, and like I told you earlier, don't expect it to actually show up on my doorstep anytime soon. So, so I didn't have to <laughs> wait. I wanted to play it now, so I, I ordered it on Steam because I just you know. I already had a physical copy coming on my Switch, but I didn't see the point in buying a digital copy as well. So I played it on Steam. That way I could also play it on the Legends cabinet if I wanted to do that way and really enjoyed it. Now I have mine on the Nintendo Switch, but if you have an Xbox One and if you have Game Pass, it's free right now on oh, Game Pass. sweet. On Xbox. On, if you have Xbox One and Game Pass, it's 100% free right out of the gate. So it's like, wow. man, that's, that's how you do it. Yep. But I have mine on, I have mine on the Nintendo Switch. That plays fine. And what are you going to get it on, Glenn? I have mine on the PS4. Turbo graphics. Uh, you know, I, I, I got to. No, no, you can't play it on Turbo graphics. No, it's got to be played on the Atari 5200. I got to get that copy. <laughs> That's coming out, right? Yeah. That's right. Or the Magnavox Odyssey. The Magnavox Odyssey yeah. version has got to be great. Yeah. Sticks of Rage. Yes, that's right. Sticks of Rage. <laughs> that's what we'll have to call it from that one. Um, I, I was actually surprised it, there wasn't there and, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I was just reading articles on this, but wasn't there like a, an Australian hack of some sort where you could actually like guys were getting it before the U S and they were playing it like, cause I seen it all over Twitch and I'm sitting here going like, and I saw it in the chat room cause I was watching people are playing it. I'm like, how are you playing it in the U S but there was some kind of Australian hack that like, if you change something or change your time zone, you could actually download it or something earlier. Did anybody right, else see uh, that? Well, in in Australia, if you have a at least if you have a Nintendo Switch account, it probably works for PlayStation Four also. Um, but games come out at let's say midnight. Well, midnight in Australia is like six p.m. our time or something like that. So if it's like midnight there, you know, it's a different time for us. And that's happened before. I mean, there's also going to be people who like leak the review copies, which is which is terrible. Um, but yeah, there is there have been I have several friends who use that Australian time zone thing. It's free to set up an account, an extra account on your system, um, just to have that to have that thing and when you download the game it's the same game it's the same u.s game um nintendo at least as far as switch goes a lot of games um will come out almost like universal it's just like it's the same game but if you get into japan it's you know default the japanese language you get in america it's default the english language um but you can't even like if i buy the american version of the game i can't even buy the japanese version of the game because i already purchased it um just because it's the same game just with different language track on it or something so it's it's interesting but i've seen that happen before in the past so there you guys but go New version of a game comes out. You want to buy it digital? Get yourself For an account. Yep, yeah, play it early. <laughs> Get on Twitch before everybody else. 
for the body painters That's to get right. on there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everywhere I go, yeah. it's like, I, you know, part of my job, my day job is I work for a software company that, that makes broadcasting software. Right. And we get yeah. all the, we had this guy that called in and he, he was like, Hey, um, I'm trying my hand at Twitch. He, he does like one of those, um, tinfoil hat type shows, right. Where conspiracies <laughs> run amok. <laughs> And he's like, know this guy? Well, well, he's like, I'm on every platform and I go on the Twitch and he says, uh, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. He says, I go on there and I, I can't get any viewers. And I, and I'm in my head, I'm going, because obviously you don't want to tell him like, well, maybe because yeah. your content is not something for Twitch. But he's like, yeah, right. I go on there and he says, all, you either have to be blonde and, and sitting there being all ditzy or you have to be painting yourself. <laughs> and so I got to kick it. So I went on Twitch and I started looking, just perusing. Because usually when I stream, I just stream gameplay or I go to the retro section and watch. And I so I started looking where he's. I'm like, oh my goodness, he's right. That's the only way you're gonna get viewers around here, right? Right. So that's why I make that joke all the time. But but it's true, you know. What I mean, are we proven proven method? It's it's not the only proven method, but that we've seen uh, Doug do it many times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not shy about my body paint. You know? I, I I seen that when I go to Hobby Lobby and they've got a deal. You know, I'm See? gonna take advantage of it. You know, forty percent off. You I'll didn't think Glenn. You didn't think Glenn was going to tell me that, did you? Yeah, he no, told, he no, told me. You know, the fact he knew about Hobby Lobby and the paints and the price <laughs> off is scary to me. It's just scary. <laughs> Glenn, you got a super chat in the uh, the chat there. If uh, Doug, you want to read that out for him, because he, he's not going to be able to look at him. He doesn't even have his glasses on. He's trying to get oh, closer. I know. I know. Read the you got it. He can't read it. it. Well, he's asked. He's asked a question. I can't even answer. How do you get fifteen thousand plus members on the device? I don't even have fifteen thousand plus members. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think I got fifteen members. I mean, I don't know. I guess. I guess you got to do this. You got to go like this. Money, money, money. <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> no, but I. I think. Uh, I. Th I think more and more we're going to see these these digital games coming out faster and faster. From articles sure. that I've been reading because of everything that's going on, John, I want to ask you, right. like, how do you feel? Because Doug, myself, and even well, we know Glenn because he's got five of everything. How do you feel about the whole <laughs> downloadable content? Are you one of those that even if you download it now and you got to wait two months for a physical copy, are you one that has to have a a, a physical copy? You know, um, if there's, I, I don't shy away from digital. I'm a huge fan of indie titles. Some of my favorite games on all console on all modern consoles are all indie games that don't have physical copies of them. And I'm not waiting for limited run games. I'm not waiting for a special reserve. There's a ton of companies who will take these indie games um, that are digital and um, and make them uh, physical. IndieBox did that for, uh, for uh, Steam games. Um, if there's an option, I'll buy the physical 100% of the time. But if there's not a physical, I still won't shy away from buying the digital. And I have, I mean, I have a decent collection. I'm not a collector. I just happen to have a collection of a bunch of games. <laughs> um, and, and, for, for that reason. And then sometimes, you know, well, my, in my end of day theory is just, yes, it's physical and it's on a disc. Like I purchased, um, like Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PlayStation 4. Couldn't wait to play that. And I bought, and I could have downloaded it, but I bought the physical disc, which is fine. But some people are like, I'm not, it, I have friends, trust me, I have friends who are just like, I will never even play it if there's not a physical version of it. It's like, well, yeah, but down the line, it, when you pop in that physical disc, if there's no more support for it, you're just going to have a coaster because when you pop in a disc, it'll be like, Hey, you can't play the game without updating it. So here's all your updates. Right. And then it's right. going to dump the information from the disc onto the console anyway. Um, and then the disc is basically just the key to make that, you know, digital game work in the first place. So it's just like, I like having the physical version too. And if there's a physical version, I'll, I'll grab it. But um, anymore, especially with having children too, uh, sometimes having these digital games, it's just so much easier, like for flights or whatever, just to have my switch loaded with, however many games are on there you know some of them are games i purchased some of them are review copies of games still um you know but then having to like take a game out put it back in take a game out put it back in the problem with that also though is then you're in that ipod mindset where you just listen for the, to the first 30 seconds of a song skip 30 seconds of a song skip um you know when you actually pop in the disc and you have to play it now now, now you're now you're committed you have to play this game that you're playing as opposed to playing something on a retro pie where you know the first time you die okay that sucked move on to the next game <laughs> so it forces you to sit down and actually play the game well, Glenn, do you think this is slowly killing the the resale of games by having by having the digital only? I mean, because think about it: if you got digital only, you can't trade them in. A lot of these kids, like you look at your son. I'm not saying he does it because you probably wouldn't allow him to. Is he's not taking his old games and trading them in the GameStop and getting ripped off, as some of these kids are doing. Right. You know, for the newest console, 
is it killing is it killing the industry in a sense i don't think it's killing the industry but i could say a couple quick things one is i I agree with john like i don't mind a digital copy as long as it doesn't require like a server authentication so when this company goes belly up or vanishes you can't play the game anymore that's what can't authenticate with a server that's what i don't like about the newest the newest games there are games you could download and you know it plays local it's fine if there's an update it'll take it but it doesn't need the update to play but as to what you were asking I know some people who, like my son, I bought him. Of course, he never played with it. I bought him a, a 3DS, which is now my 3DS, because he never played with it. <laughs> but it came with a couple of games, like, digitally installed on it, right? Now, I, mine's fine, because it's in a bag on the shelf. But other people I know played it, and the machine broke. And when they went to get a new one, they had to buy the digital copy on a, on a cartridge. They didn't, they didn't put it back on there. It's like they lost it type of thing. Yeah. So that, that's what kind of bugs me about that type of thing. So... Um, I'm right. not opposed to digital only type of game. I like Doom, right? Doom back in the day. First, you could only get Doom or Wolfenstein uh, on, you know, it was, it was not, I guess it was still digital downloads. But you could play the game. You could download it. You could play it. It's only when you got these games where people, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of a game that, that went away, the servers shut down. And then when those servers shut down, the game is worthless. It's just, it's a paperweight. Mm-hmm. That's why I have a problem with it on a number of levels. One, from your point of view, because you bought this. Now you can't play it, but also from a historic standpoint, because the game's offline, until someone hacks a way to get it going again, and most people are not going to hack every single game that the server's been shut down on. You know, there's a historic point to this. I mean, these are games, yes, but these are also people's times at coding. It's it's just history but as what, well. This but, is but, our history, but, like art. But, Glenn, what about if, if the hard drive dies? Like, right now, we're all going back, and we're buying these TurboGrafx-16 original cartridges and playing them on our... You can't do that. Thirty years from now, is your son going to be able to go back and buy, you know, a play? Your hard drive is going to die. It's inevitable. It's like oh, five years, five to seven years. For that. In thirty years, I'm going to be dead, and everything I have here is going to be in a garage sale. For five <laughs> He's going to put it outside, saying it's junk. But I guess take it, and you three are going to be there, getting all the stuff that I say Absolutely. to my son. He's going, I don't care about it. Yeah, ma- make care. sure you send us. Our, tell Cole what our addresses are and our phone numbers, so he can give us, you know. No, but seriously, but though, no, like the collectors of future. That's, right. That's the thing is, I mean, we, again, we talked about it before, is that everything we have, even your Switch, at one point the hardware is going to fail and die. So the, the only thing you could do is, as, as emulators come out, the ROMs get dumped, is hopefully holographic storage, which exists now, believe it or not, comes to fruition because that stuff's supposed to last like a thousand years. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing you're going to do, honestly. Really, right. when you think about it, I mean, we have the Internet Archive. If people know about that. There's actually the Internet Archive that does archive a lot of these the games, but they're still part of the experience. You're never going to get like what's going on now with arcade. Want to bring back the Coleco mini cage, right? So the the ROMs, the, the inside's already emulated. Uh, there's people have been doing that. Game and Watch is emulated, but you'll never have that physical shell, you know. And that's part of the experience. I mean, we're playing all the the like the TurboGrafx-16 games or Nintendo games on a computer emulator, it's just not the same. I mean, you, you're playing the game, yeah, it's fun, but the experience is different than when you had the actual controls and the console. It's just a different experience. So I think eventually, as time goes on, that's going to just be lost to time. You're just never going to get that again. It's just going to be playing the games in an emulated fashion. And that's just the way it's going to be. You're very you depressing. That, you're depressing. John, what's your take? Come on. <laughs> He's What's depressing. He's depressing us. <laughs> no, you know, and I was thinking back to the the resale value of the whole thing. Now I don't really sell my games. I don't mind trading a couple of them here and there. You know, if I'm for sure never going to play it ever again, someone else wants it. Because I can always find it back. The cool thing with these like the physical copies of games is you can find you can get it back. Like I'm not so I wanted to play Final Fantasy VII, so I grabbed it. But things like um, uh, what, what's a game that came out kind of recently? Um, I can't even think of one. But. I don't mind waiting. Like, you know, give it, you know, like like Last of Us 2. It's going to come out. Do I need to play when it first comes out? Not really. I can wait a while, and then I'll get it when it's when they drop the price by half within a, a few weeks later. Sometimes it seems like when they do this. Um, it's the, when you resell a system that's full of digital games, though, um, like, he's like, hey, here's my, here's my PlayStation 3, and it comes with 200 built-in games that are downloaded. How much will you give me for it? And you're like, and they don't even care. They're just like, I don't care about the digital games. I'll get, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, the, the PlayStation 3, that's where the money is. The digital games don't right. have any value to it. You're basically just, you know, you're, right. you're 
renting the pleasure of playing these games <laughs> until uh, until you move on. And um, and that's why what you know what Dylan was talking about. That's why preservation is so important. Um, I mean, places like the Strong Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Places like the uh, like the the Video Game History Foundation. You know, they're taking all these um, old archives of games for your for PC, for NES, and anything else really, and just just having them archived somewhere. So there is a you know, there is an instance of it. It's a part of video game history. Um, we've lost right. so much of that back in the 70s and 80s and even in the 90s of games that that they're they're gone and they'll never be found ever again. Literally, um, just like just like movies, right. you know, you know, you know, movies deteriorate after a while. So all these great films from like the 30s right. and 40s are gone forever. And it's such a such a soul crushing thing to think about. You know, mm-hmm. and that's where we're at with yep. the cusp. He, he, all this. He's right. He's right because this is it's an art form. I mean it, it, it's a, it's entertainment, but this is an art form and it's stuff that has to be preserved and it's just getting more and more difficult because there are companies that you know don't want their stuff touched, you know they come after you for it, but you know we need, we need to preserve it for our kids, not my kid, he doesn't care about it, but other kids <laughs> want, want to play it. Somebody's kids. Uh, yeah. Somebody's, somebody's kids, kids yeah. has to play it. <laughs> right. So it's 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 just it's, it's, I'm not being trying to be depressing. It's just a reality that the older something gets, the harder it is to, to keep it going. And to be honest, we, I mean, we were talking about this the other day, Stephen, that you know maybe we do a segment where I talk about a game that no one even remembers at all. Yes. Like a game from the early 70s or 80s that was a great game, but it just disappeared over the course of time. And if people go, oh, my God, I forgot about that game, and they bring it back to the forefront. There are tens of thousands of thousands of different games out there Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Dig Dug. Those are the ones people remember. They yeah, remember right. the other one. Well, I, I know, I know too. Um, you know, and John, I, I, st- I was watching. Even though I have the Turbo Graphics Mini, I watched right. your video where you went through each of the games because I was new at it, and I wanted to get somebody that's been experienced because I respected the fact, like you and Glenn, when you say, "I've had this as a kid. These are the cool games to play," and I'm sure Doug, you do the same thing. Some right. of these games, like I probably wouldn't have clicked on. Um, in in the menu system, but you played it and you were like, oh, this you know this is really cool. This is what you do. You go through and do this. You right. know that to me, those videos are like, those are gold, because I don't have time sometimes to try to figure out, you know, right. what game does what, and and sometimes I go into like yo yo bro, right. Like I, about Yo Bro, and that's a system. That's like the, that's a system killer. He's like, oh, I really want to play this game. Like the first game I want to try is Yo Bro, and you play it, and you're like, how do, how did this even exist? And then you and then you're done. You're just like, well, I tried. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> well, you'll like... never experience military madness. You'll never experience yeah uh, summer assault, which is another great game. You know, there's <laughs> there's, there's, so, there's so much out there. You know. Well, I'm sitting there. Uh, I don't know, Glenn, if you had the same experience because you were defending it, but like Yo Bro, I'm sitting there going, this is awful. And then I'm watching yeah, John's gotta, video, gotta, and John's like, yeah, this, this isn't really a good game. If you're going to have the gaming experience, you're going to have the gaming experience with a console. you got to have the good, and you got to have the bad. You uh, do. Just, oh, that's it bad. It's bad on the Sega Genesis, but whatever. But you still have to have some bad there as well. So, yo, bro, was it a good game? No. But, you know, I'm sure someone liked it. It was good enough to have a sequel. I mean, they, like I said, they made Camp California for the, for the TurboGrafx-16 six, uh, CD, the TurboGrafx CD, Camp California, with actual Beach Boys music. I mean, it's just not even, like, inspired by. It's just, like, the actual tunes are the background music of that game. And, it, I mean, apparently that's probably where all the money went. The, all, all the money went to the licensing for <laughs> using these games, and yeah, that actually went to the programmers. <laughs> and a thing, a thing to remember, real quick. Thing to remember is that these games are released in Japan, and the culture is very different there. So that yo bro with the bear and a skateboard being in like you know California, that's how they kind of perceived the area. So to them, it could have mm-hmm. been a hit. You know, that's why yeah. it came out a sequel. But you know, I probably, I, I would doubt that very much that they thought that was. So before we get to wrap this up, yeah, right, right. Before we wrap this up, John, we got to ask you. So all, all time favorite game. Okay, all-time okay. favorite system. And what game are you looking forward to playing that you know is coming out? Uh, my, it changes every day, and it does for, for most. But my go-to favorite game of all time is Zelda II: The Adventures of Link, just because how I felt when I first played it back in the day, and I played it right when it first came out. Um, it was just I mean I loved Legend of Zelda and that style. I grew up, like I said, I grew up with Pong. I had the Atari, grew up in the arcades. 
you know, here it is, you know, late eighties. I finally got my NES, which has been out for a couple of years by now. Um, so I just had those earlier Nintendo game memories. Um, but then when I played Zelda two, it was during a time when Nintendo didn't care about guidelines. You know, they were like, you know, here's Super Mario Brothers, and now here's Super Mario Brothers 2. And, and, you, and you probably know that Super Mario Brothers 2 is a different game in Japan anyway. Um, so then here's Legend of Zelda, and here's Legend of Zelda 2. And nobody said, at the time, nobody said, like, that's not Legend of Zelda. That's nothing like Legend of Zelda. It should be this. It's like, nobody cares. Like, oh, okay, that's fine. Here's Legend of Zelda 2. Um, and I loved it. I loved that side-scrolling platformy part, but I loved the, uh, you can still build your levels, gain your levels. I'm not a huge JRPG fan. You know, uh, when it comes to like turn-based battles, it's like, man, this is—I just, I just want to hit you. I don't want to wait for my turn. You know, um, <laughs> to, me, to me at the time, it was fantastic. It's, it's dated now. If you if you play Zelda two now for the very first time, it's, it's pretty rough. It's just like, oh, it's, it's like monotonous kind of. But you know, thinking back to how I felt when I first played that game, um, that's, that's why. Um, and the NES is my favorite system of all time, just because of the variety. It was that perfect time in my life where I was like, here's you know, the, just what they had and what was available. And um, I made friends back in school. Like This is, I must have been uh, elementary, middle school for me uh, mm -hmm. when the NES came out, um, where I was just like, you know, I have friends today because we played Nintendo games. And, um, you know, we didn't have the internet back then. We had Nintendo Power every other month at the time. So, you know, so when it came to games like Legend of Zelda or like whatever else at the time, you know, you actually had to make friends with other people to say like, hey, did you ever find where this one thing is? Like, oh yeah, I found this thing, but I can't find this. And like, oh, I know where that is. It's over here. So um, it was just, a, it was a fun time. It was a, it was a fun time for video gaming growing up, for sure. Awesome. Uh, games that are coming out that I, well, Trials of Mana just came out. Um, I'm not the biggest, I like Secret of Mana. I don't think it's the greatest game ever, but I like it. And I played a little bit of Trials of Mana, a little bit, but not a much for the Super Famicom. Um, but because it's kind of going back to that thing where I'm not, it's not turn-based battles. You're just fighting people. Um, I mean, I mean, that, that game just came out. I haven't even had a chance to play it much. I played the demo for a little bit and I'll grab the full version of that eventually. Um, but games that are coming out soon. Um, you know, the first game that comes to mind is Iron Man VR because I'm a huge VR gamer. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Iron Man VR, but I'm sure mm -hmm. there's other games. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Cool. Cool. Well, and there's shots fired in the YouTube chat room towards Glenn. When we were talking about Yo Bro, okay, so Rostalgia, okay. our buddy Rostalgia over there, he said Yo Bro was probably better than the original three Star Wars films. Glenn, before you say anything, oh, let wait, me whoa, put whoa. you, wait, 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 original? let me put you full screen and take off your lower third because I have a feeling uh, you got three minutes. Go. Wait, well, well, first of all, I assume he meant to say either the prequel saga or the Kathleen Kennedy abomination. He was not talking about A New Hope, Empire, or Jedi. No, no, no. He's talking no, about he the original three. He, he, he said, original. He said original come at me, bro. World. Come at me, bro. Yeah but, how, yeah, but how old is nostalgia? Him, original three sounds to me like prequels. I, I'm, I just, I can't, I cannot, I cannot even get into that. I can't. I can't. <laughs> because, because he's doing, he's doing the bait. He's just trying to get me agitated. And, and I'm not going to let it happen. Because <laughs> it is because working. It's not <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Now, if we're talking about Kathleen Kennedy and how she ruined Star Wars, I could talk about that all you all you want, <laughs> or how she destroyed Disney down in Florida with the you know Doug was down there and it was like you know there's no one there. Rostal just said episodes four, Wars five, land, and you know? six. He said episodes four, five, and six. Yeah, he's just play, he's playing. Me and him are like that. He's just playing. He's just trying to get into my skin because I it, it, no, sorry, not buying it. <laughs> not, not falling for that trap. If anything, I can, say Jedi, right I can say Jedi was a little bit weak because it took Chewbacca and his people and made them into little, little teddy bears. I mean, that kind of was stupid. But other than that, not falling for the trap. Absolutely okay. perfect film. Right. Perfect. Well, before we get to sign off here, I want to let everybody know, Monday, this Monday, two days from now, we're going to do a special episode of the Retro Buzz. 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have Al Link. If you guys have a Legends Ultimate cabinet, you want to tune in. If you have an arcade one-up cabinet, you want to tune in because Al Link makes the awesome Pixelcade that some that I know Glenn and myself have that allows you to customize your marquee. I made a Tech Buzz oh, one, yeah. a Retro Buzz marquee. It's pretty awesome. You can run it with a Raspberry Pi. I think he got it working now with a Raspberry Pi four, and I know at Games he's trying to get it working with them right out of the box. So tune in. You want to check it out. Al's going to kind of go over his his workflow with it, I guess, and and how he's designing right. and some of the ideas he has with it. So. It's, nice. it's real nice. I mean, it's yeah. definitely one of the nicest things, you know, I have. Uh, well, it's over there. 
we'll, we'll see it Monday night. We don't have but, a promo code uh, for it, but P Dubs does. No. Inside joke, but P Dubs does have a promo code for it, so you can get a discount on it. Um, out there, I don't know if he's tuned in, but it's his birthday weekend. I think but P Dubs is turning what fifteen tomorrow? Uh, either thirteen or or thirteen or fourteen, about that. something like that. I mean, his wife his wife really rocked the cradle over there. I think he's like fourteen. <laughs> I don't I don't know, but he's in Arizona. I think it's legal out there. I guess I don't know. Yeah, could be. No. We're, we're, he's turning he's turning this many. Yeah, there you go. John's right. <laughs> Perfect. Um, also guys want to let you know if you're interested, I know a lot of you guys have requested over, over the, over the last couple, uh, months and stuff. We actually have our retro buzz shirts. You can go up to, uh, tpublic.com slash the tech buzz, or you can go to the tech buzz.net slash store. And you can see, I know Doug, myself, we, we got them here. They got the really cool design that doesn't look like Glenn got punched in the face. So you guys will enjoy, uh, the, <laughs> these great shirts that we have made. And, uh, like I said, we're working on getting the mugs. They they told me with the everything that's going on, it's going to be a little bit yet, so we'll be patient with that and get that. But uh, yeah, I mean, John, you're, John's going to stick around for a little bit afterwards, hopefully here, and uh, we'll take some phone calls. But John, thank you so much. Let everybody know where they can find you and uh, what you got going on. Uh, well, um, my I'm on Twitter and Instagram and all that at John Blue Riggs. Uh, my first name, color, last name, John Blue Riggs. Uh, find me on Twitter. Hit me up there. Uh, Instagram as well. Um, and it, I basically, I mean, the easiest thing is just search for John Riggs. It's just my name. Uh, search for that on YouTube. You'll see me probably vaguely pointing at whatever I'm talking about. Um, I just, I literally just did a video today on 20 arcade games that I enjoyed growing up that are from the 80s and 90s, uh, which is perfect because if you have the at games, Legends 1UP, quick plug for them, again, <laughs> some some games you might consider uh, throwing on there, games that I had fond memories of, um, my videos are kind of kind of quicker pace where it's like, I don't try to go into too many details, I'm, not, I'm I suck at doing reviews, I learned this trying to do YouTube a long time ago. I suck at doing reviews, so I don't even bother doing reviews. I just like, here's a game, here's what it looks like. Uh, what do you think it's cool? I don't know, but um, but check that out. But I have a bunch of videos that are have a bunch of videos that are like that. But um, I'm probably best known for trying to either fix broken video games with open cart surgery, um, and I also show you how you can uh, hack your own Nintendo game. So maybe you want to be in Super Mario Brothers. I show you how you can take out Mario, put in yourself, and then put that back onto a physical cart to uh, either play for yourself or to give to someone for Christmas or something like that. And I, I show you how to do everything and links to all the tools you need and everything. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you yeah, jumping on awesome. here. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on here. And and my pleasure. Mr. Doug, what's your new video coming out tomorrow? I was gonna say on Sunday, but well tomorrow is Sunday. Oh, yeah. I'm it's I'm all yeah, messed up. What do we got for the the Legends what is it? The School of Legends Arcades. Legendary Academy, yeah. So tomorrow's video is uh navigating the menus. This is just a basic introduction to all the, the menus, the sub menus, what do they do, how how do you navigate them, what what does each one mean, you know, because if you're not really tech savvy and you walk up to that Legends Ultimate Cabinet for the first time and you see all the menus on the side and you see the menus on the top, uh, it doesn't really explain it well in the the like the three page instruction book the cabinet. So hopefully this gives people a basic understanding of what what is in those menus and how they can navigate and find things they're truly looking for. Awesome. And, and going along with that, this weekend, guys, if you have a Legends Ultimate Cabinet, the the two games that are going to be out there, I believe um, they have. Uh, Glenn's favorite, and I don't know if Glenn's gonna get in. And I actually, what what are what is he doing? Yo, bro, really? Yeah, no, no, not yo, bro. Uh, Glenn, what what's, what's your favorite arcade? What's your what's your favorite arcade? What's your favorite arcade game that you always oh always got to build your arcades to look like? Uh, what's my favorite arcade game? I have, there's too many, man. Well, that's, the one that you have, tough... it's not Zaxxon. You have a certain thunder stick that you want to give away. Oh, oh, is that what we're talking about now? Well, <laughs> oh, okay, but but there's there's a competition that somebody could use that giveaway for a certain game. What's the oh, name? I mean, of like the... uh, for Tron, you're talking about? Oh, is the that, Tron. That, that would... Tron, is, is Glenn's you, favorite game of all around, time. Is that how you were going around? Listen. This to get that? <laughs> Listen, you're not picking up my cues here. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. I still got my blood pressure up from this, from this comment before. <sighs> so, so, <laughs> so they, anyway, yeah. So anyway, so anyway, I wanted to uh, do a giveaway. Actually, my first giveaway, to be quite honest, because you know, people know me. I don't give away anything, so this is hard <laughs> for me. Uh, <laughs> I want to appropriate. I don't want to give away. But 
I do want to give away uh, a Tron joystick, whether for the arcade one up or the Legends Ultimate. Uh, the winner will just tell me which one that they would like to get. Um, I think what we want to do is we wanted to try and uh, promote, you know, the Retro Buzz. So we're trying to, trying to figure out how we want to do it. So maybe on tomorrow, on Monday show, we'll go into the details of how you could win uh, a Tron stick for your, either your Legends Ultimate or your Arcade 1-Up. Uh, maybe you just have to tell me how much you like the Turbo Graphics better than a Sega Genesis. Maybe that'll be good. I don't know. <laughs> oh maybe we'll my. do something like that. Or I'll have an Star anti Wars giveaway if that's six. the case. They're both, they're both great. Or our Star Wars 4, 5, and 6 are the best things ever since sliced bread type of thing, you know. Well, so we're, so we're going to announce that what tomorrow, or are we going to announce that Monday when we have Al on? We'll do it. We'll do it on Monday when Al's on. Okay. So we'll do it then. So either way, it escapes me right now. I just messaged Jason because it escapes me. There's another game that they're doing the tournament for. Make sure you check it out. Follow him on social media. He told me I had so much stuff I was trying to remember here. Oh, he oh, bless him. He texted me. Here we go. Fix it, Felix is the other game oh, that they're. Yeah. So we got Tron, Fix it, Felix. Um, fi oh, fix it, Felix Jr. He said so. Right. You know, got it pulled up here. So make sure if you guys are into that, um, I beat I beat Glenn's score last competition. I think I was tenth overall on Tron for a guy that's not into Tron. I learned how to play it that day because Glenn had a higher score, but he didn't do it through there, so it doesn't count. So oh. I don't I don't deal with technology. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> if it's not on the leaderboard, it doesn't exactly. count. So I don't want to hear it. Exactly. So my I goal. I don't trust the internet. You don't trust anything on the internet. Man. Listen, my goal of the whole tournament with that games was not to be first. And I told the other people, I'm like, just keep me in there. So I'm higher than Glenn. That's all I care about. You all can beat me. That's fine. As long as I can say that I beat Glenn, Mr. Tron. I'm happy. That's right. Try. That's it. That's all I care. I don't care if Doug so comes in there and beats me or John. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my uh, score on videotape, and I'm gonna send that to you know. Nope. Um, Doesn't uh, count. Has, has, has to be on right? the. Nope. Billy has, Mitchell. Nope. Billy Mitchell will will vouch for my score. You I better get million. Walter Day over to your house, okay, and mm -hmm. have him stand there, because then, then, then maybe I'll believe it. Maybe. I can look at Walter. Wait, I can look at Walter Day. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, need the referee shirt. <laughs> that's, not bad. that's not bad all right we'll give it to you we'll give it to you so that's what's coming up this weekend so it ends tomorrow night at midnight i believe jason can correct me if i'm wrong in the chat room but uh midnight tomorrow so make sure you guys check that out the at games get in the tournament it's a lot of fun we, we've done a few of them um it's a lot of fun but uh make sure you guys go check out glenn and all his billions of places on the interwebs but the main place not, you can check them out many, not as many as john but i'm, I'm getting close well, okay. you, you guys can compete. Uh, there we go. Glenn started a new project with his son. Why don't you talk a little bit about that really quick? Because then we got to wrap this for post show. Yeah, just, you know, my son's now 15 and he's got his own channel, but I figured we'd start doing it together. So we're doing a new show. It's a live stream only called Glenn and Cole Plays. We'll pick a game, a console that he hates, but I love, and torch him with it for about an hour. And we, we'll play the game. So. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> Tough love. There you go. There you go. Well, we appreciate all you guys coming out here, especially on this Saturday. We'll be back to Fridays next week, but we also have that special edition coming up Monday, so we hope you guys tune in. Al's a great guy. We know you will like it. If you haven't seen the Pixelcade up close, I know Glenn's got some videos on that as well, so you guys can check that out ahead of time if you're curious. But bring your questions. Al will have answers. I feel like this is a Radio Shack commercial, but tune in anyways. And... Uh, <laughs> If, if you got questions, he's got answers. So uh, that's what's coming up here, coming on Monday. We appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll see you guys here that are in the audience in a few minutes for the post show. The rest of you guys will see you on Monday or next Friday. Uh, have a good week. <laughs>